Dude, what happened? You look different. You've gained a little weight? Is that a nose job? Who did this to you? Your cousin, the M8, got a beautiful face. Even the BMW M2, your little brother, looks normal. Kind of. Your ancestor, the E46 M3, was one of the best looking sports coupes when it came out on the market. Does any of that legendary BMW sports car still live on in you? Hi, I'm Alex, and behind me is the 2024 BMW M4 Competition in Destroyer Gray. This BMW puts out over 503 horsepower and 479 pound-feet of torque from its twin-turbocharged inline six. Join me as we're lucky enough to test drive this car today, put it through its paces, see what it can do, and more importantly, how it makes you feel. While driving the M4, we set out to answer one question. Given that the heritage of M cars are renowned for being just as good of a daily driver as they were on the track, does this 2024 G82 M4 competition hold up as a daily driver sports car or just as a sports car? Reading through reviews online, a lot of folks have said this BMW M4's inline six actually reminds them of the experience in the 2000s era E46 M3, but those are very different powertrains. The E46 M3, which was produced between 2000 to 2006, was powered by a 3.2 liter, 333 horsepower inline six that was naturally aspirated. It was one of the most legendary inline sixes on the planet. Now the inline six in this BMW M4 is a 3.0 liter twin turbocharged inline six. The regular M4 comes with 473 horsepower and 406 pound feet of torque. This M4 competition, however, ups the horsepower to 503, as well as 479 pound-feet of torque. For the rear-wheel drive BMW M4 competition, BMW will claim it goes zero to 60 in 3.8 seconds. Now, for the all-wheel drive X-Drive competition model, BMW claims it'll get to 60 in 3.4 seconds. Car and driver did test drive this version and said it was able to do the quarter mile in 11 seconds flat. This M4 is two wheel drive and for the first time in an M car, I would prefer actually all wheel drive with this model. You can feel every bit of that 479 pound feet of torque ripping through second basically when you try and launch. We very well may be looking at the last generation of internal combustion engine powered M3s and M4s. Indeed, there are rumors out there that BMW intends to electrify the entire platform with the next generation release. It's pretty clear that one of the things that auto enthusiasts are parting with is not just naturally aspirated or even internal combustion engines, it's manual transmissions. And as you can see, I'm driving the automatic Steptronic transmission, which is phenomenal on the M4, don't get me wrong, but they don't even offer a manual transmission on the M4 competition. As a matter of fact, that's available only on the stock M4. A BMW board member recently stated that while manual transmissions are fun, they're on their way out. And stated if you wanna buy a manual M car, now is your opportunity to do that. And either consumers listened or BMW needs to listen to consumers because in 2023, one out of every five M3 or M4s was ordered in manual. That's a lower percentage, of course, but when you look actually at the M2 model, half of those were ordered in spec'd out in manual transmission. So it's very clear there's still an enthusiast appreciation for manual transmissions, and I'd love to see that optionality continue where you have both manual and automatic transmissions offered. It is a sin that this competition, the one with the most horsepower, is offered only in automatic. That BMW board member further went on to state, we have customers who travel roughly 25,000 to 30,000 kilometers a year and don't want to stand in traffic changing gear. Again, optionality, offer both. 
One of the cool exhaust features that you can hear is the variable exhaust. And it's pretty common on sports cars these days, but basically you have three settings, comfort, sport, and sport plus. And as long as you press this button right here to activate the active exhaust, it will get increasingly louder as you turn into more aggressive modes. In the most aggressive Sport Plus setting, when you let off the throttle, the M4 will still inject a little bit of fuel and it kind of gives you this cool back burble that you hear, some pops that's not overly aggressive and does sound pretty cool. There is a really cool new mode added on the M3 and M4 that I want to talk about and it's these two little buttons right here, M1 and M2. And what these are, are basically like cheat code toggles in a video game. You can pre-program settings into each one of these buttons, including turning it from comfort to sport to sport plus, which is the most aggressive engine setting. You can turn the variable exhaust on or off and have that pre-programmed. Traction control, suspension stiffness settings, all of that can be pre-programmed into these buttons. Basically, you can pre-program the most sporty aggressive mode on one of these buttons and then have on the other side your neighborhood mode where it's the quietest, turns off the variable exhaust, turns on the most comfortable suspension settings, makes the steering wheel easier to turn, all within the touch of a button. For suspensions, all BMW M4s come with the same suspension with adaptive dampers. It's very firm. There are three different settings. Again, Comfort, Sport, and Sport Plus, each one in increasing stiffness. And Sport Plus is very, very stiff. You don't have much give. All M4s share the same excellent brake setup with ceramic disc brakes cross-drilled in 15.7 inches up front and 15 inches on the rear. Really for decades, BMWs have been known for having very clean, professional interiors and the M4 is no exception. Very sporty, there is the carbon fiber trim, which is an option here, but everything's pretty simplistic. You really only have four buttons down here and a volume button, a little bit more down here going on with different options. BMW M models have always had a really satisfying steering wheel, and this one's no exception. The steering wheel's a little thick, fits perfectly in the palm of your hands, and everything is within thumb's reach that you would expect. The paddles are at perfect distance. You're not overly inundated with buttons and features. Everything that you would look for is right there. There is an optional sunroof that is not on this vehicle. It would, of course, take place of the carbon fiber that's on top. It's a weight savings, personally, I'm a big open cockpit type guy. I would love to have a sunroof. If there's one gripe I do have within the M4's interior, it is the seats. Look, I totally get, totally get this is the competition model, which means that these seats are meant for you to only be in them when you're driving it hard on the track. And, and that's definitely how it feels. The seats kind of look like some ergonomic gaming chair and they look totally cool. No doubt they keep you bolstered in when you're whipping them for around the track or putting it through its paces. But when you're driving it a day to day, it's, it's, it's not the most comfortable ride. There have been comfier M seats. Make no mistake, this is not a Cadillac. One of the consistent components that you've always seen in M cars is that it's always been very predictable. It's not out there trying to kill you like a late 90s Dodge Viper may. There aren't massive videos out there with fails like maybe a Mustang would be. A second very prominent feature of M cars has always been that you can beat the ever living out of the car and it will take everything you throw at it. Don't get me wrong, you have to keep up on maintenance, but really, when you look at reliability, the M cars are one of the more consistent series across all of cars. One of my gripes with BMW over the years has been the naming convention that they've used interchangeably on the two and four door M3, M4 models. So going back to the debut in 1986, the M3 was a classically two door coupe. It did not come in four door or saloon as they call it overseas until 1996. After the V8 era of BMW M3s wound down and the new M was launched in 2014, BMW did split the two and four door naming convention. Of course, the four door became the BMW M4. Oh wait, no, that's not right. 
That's not right. That would make too much sense because the M3 debuted as a coupe and the M4 was, no, okay, okay. So the coupe became the BMW M4 and the four-door version became the BMW M3. And now the naming distinction isn't that important, but it is important coming up for the future of BMW. And I'll tell you about that in a moment. It's rumored as a matter of fact that the next generation M3, M4 will transition to fully electric. But there are some conflicting reports. As a matter of fact, at the very moment that I'm filming this, BMW recently came out and said there will be another generation of internal combustion engine powered M3s. What was very odd, they specifically or explicitly did not say anything about the M4. And now, mm, do you get a little frustrated with the M3, M4, BMW jargon that they've played around with here in the last 20 years? So after test driving the BMW M4 competition, putting it through its paces, what are some of the highlights? Without a doubt, it's the engine, the 503 horsepower twin turbocharged inline six that sits beneath this hood is a top notch experience. Technology is actually one of the highlights of this vehicle, and you wouldn't have said that about an M car probably 25 years ago. Whether it's the 12.3 inch digital dash in front of the driver, or the 14.9 inch infotainment screen running BMW's iDrive 8, which is its latest operating system for technology within the vehicle, it's all very seamless and works really well whether you use Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. The final highlight, the G82 platform on the M4 itself. Everything you can ask out of a sports car, power, cornering, stability, stopping, it's there in this M4 competition. It may have trouble keeping the back wheels from spinning through second, but that's something the X-Drive all-wheel drive model takes care of. Performance-wise, it just does everything so well. So what are some of the drawbacks? The sports seats in the M4 competition are absolutely built for the track. They will bolster you in and you won't budge an inch, which is phenomenal when you're whipping this car around on the track. But when you're driving it for the other 99.9% .9 of its life, or maybe even 100% for most M4s, it's not the most comfortable seat to sit in for longer periods of time than 20 minutes. Man, did this thing retighten? But if you're talking about manuals maybe not fitting this vehicle going forward due to the driver comfort, then the seats absolutely need to be looked at at the same vein. Another drawback, if I did have to nitpick, is the suspension. Even though it does have three adaptive settings, Sport, Sport Plus, and Comfort, it is stiff even in the most comfortable of settings. You're going to bounce, you're going to rattle around no matter what you hit. Now again, this is a sports competition car. You kind of expect that, but when you have ability to dampen and stiffen springs, I am a little surprised at just how stiff and bumpy this ride is. And the last drawback of the BMW M4, the face. Truly the most controversial nose in all of BMW's history. You either like it or you hate it. Regardless, it is a marked departure from the beloved kidney grills of BMW M4 and M3 past. I'm kind of in the middle when it comes to the exhaust. I spent with the M4, the more I started thinking the exhaust note was good, not great. But that's relative to its heritage. You will never ever get tired of the V8 E92 Gen and even the straight 6 E46 exhaust note. Do yourself a favor and go listen to some clips on YouTube. But this M4 does the best it can with forced induction, but I think it wore on me a bit as time went on. Am I way off here? How would you all rank the models based on sound? Let me know in the comments. The verdict on the M4 should come as no surprise. This is a phenomenal driver's vehicle through and through. The 
twin turbo inline six is always going to captivate you. I'm impressed that BMW still puts out a performance machine like this for $86,000. Started this by asking the question, does the BMW M4 in 2024 still keep that M spirit alive? And by all means it does. This is a driver's car through and through. That verdict really doesn't come as a massive surprise. BMWs have always been performance machines, especially the M models. And this M4 lives up to it. But one question we had at the beginning was whether or not the M4 competition could hold up as well as a daily driver as it does as a performance car. And while the M4 is a true beast, I hate to say that the M4 has given up on its heritage serving as a convenient daily driver. The stiff suspension and rigid seats are uncomfortable even in their comfiest settings. Now I know what you're thinking, but this is a competition model. Well, really the change between the stock M4 and this competition model is a power boost, and that wasn't a complaint. But both the seats and the suspension are identical on both the M4 and M4 competition. However, the golden rule still applies. Every car enthusiast knows if you love a car enough, you can justify any of them being your daily driver. And this M4 is no exception to that rule. As we wrap up here, if you're a traditional sports car enthusiast, it's clear that we're at a crossroads in the industry. Automakers are trending towards efficiency being their number one goal, which means more EVs and less twin turbo inline sixes, naturally aspirated V8s, and all the soundtracks that go with them. After all, just in the last 12 months, we've seen the death of the Hemi powered Dodge Challenger and Charger, the Audi R8, as well as again the death of the Chevy Camaro. Now, will they all return in electric form? That remains to be seen, but the internal combustion engine is dying. It's going much the same way as the manual transmission, extinct. I wanted to take a moment to discuss the future of this channel and what you can come to expect going forward. So for this video, I intended for this to be the first in a series of videos on this channel called the Test Drive Series. Essentially, as we're nearing the end of internal combustion engines, I wanted to take a moment to appreciate those that really stir the auto enthusiast's soul. I mean, it's clear as time passes on, there will be less internal combustion engines on the road. And of course, everything that had been produced is going to start to disappear, whether it's from wear, collisions, our goal for this test drive series moving forward will be to try and experience as many of those legendary internal combustion engines as we can. They don't have to be expensive, they can be cheaper, just something that caters to the auto enthusiast's heart. I'd love for us to experience that together. I've always thought the good old days are now, and for internal combustion engines, that could not be more true. If you do wanna help, the best thing you can do is hit like and subscribe below. If you made it to the end of the video, I just want to let you know we appreciate the hell out of you. I'm Alex, your host, and I'll see you on the next test drive.